Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service, or RADIUS, is a networking protocol that operates on port 1812 and has been around since 1991. It provides centralized authentication, authorization, and accounting management to users who connect and use network services. So RADIUS has been around, obviously, for a little while, and Free Radius is a plugin that can be used within PF Sense, and why would you use it? Well, if you want a little more features than just username, password, authentication, and in this video, we're gonna do it in two parts. The first part is, how do I set up free radius? Pretty straightforward. And then the next part is, how do you integrate it into something such as OpenVPN? Because you may want to assign specific parameters to a user, like a specific IP address each time they log in. And there are ways to do this with OpenVPN and using some config and text files you edit, but with Free Radius and as a plugin inside of PFSense, you can add them and add those specific features and settings and have them pushed right to the user when they log in all through the UI in PFSense. One thing to note, if you get a very large number of users, this is going beyond the scope, but it's something to note in case you are doing this at larger scale and you want to use it all inside of PFSense with the free radius package, you can use the MySQL. Now, the reason for this is the free radius implementation free in PFSense is not using an entire like SQL backend for this. Therefore, you want something faster because if you have, let's say 800 users you wanna put in here, uh, it's gonna be a little bit slower to pull from the database inside of PFSense, which uses like an XML file, I believe for this, and it saves these users into a flat file essentially. Uh, so it's not as fast as a database query. So if you have 100 users, no problem. If you have 800 users, you may wanna consider going further and using this inside of SQL. All right, so let's get started. You go to the package manager, available packages, and type in free R. And currently, as of May 2019 here, it's free radius three that we're gonna install. And confirm. That part's pretty pain free. But as you're gonna see, when it installs this, it installs free radius basically unconfigured. It's very, very uh, basic. It's just like package loaded, but no configuration. So that's what I'm gonna walk you through is each step of the configuration. All right, with the package installed, we'll close all these extra tabs we don't need and go to services, free radius. First thing to set up is gonna be the interface. So we have to set up the interface and the listening ports. And we're just gonna use the default ports here. So for purposes of this demonstration, we're just gonna bind it to all the IP addresses on here, but of course, by default, the firewall rules for external, like the WAN, even though it does bind to all the ports, uh, it is not going to be available externally to the WAN. You'd still have to open up the ports, uh, just an FYI in case you're wondering, but you can just leave this at uh, asterisk right here, port 1812, which is the default port for authentication, IPv4, and uh, we can just type auth port here. And have it set up now you see if you wanted to go not default ports that's certainly an option we're just going to go everything at the default ports because when you start connecting devices to this uh, and you have things at non-default ports well that can be kind of a headache next port we're going to do is 1813 and this is going to be for accounting that is a default account uh, accounting port let's put acct here and for the purposes of setting this up with a vpn uh, in OpenVPN, these are the only things that you need in requirement, but I will show in case you're doing something more. Yes, it does have a status COA proxy detail, like some other detailed connection informations uh, that you could do. For example, some switches want to monitor a status or some logging tools if you have people authenticating with this, and it can then query for status of uh, if that person's in. I think you can do that in Captive Portal as well if we do that. Um, if but for, like I said, for this particular video, we're just gonna be doing OpenVPN, so the only two needed ports. And I'm always uh, on the side of caution. I never set up more than needs to be set up unless I'm using those features. The next thing we do is determine what clients are gonna to connect to this. Now we have to set up the NAS slash client. Now this is specifically about setting up the client as in what's gonna be connecting to it as in OpenVPN, which is running on this PFSense. So we're gonna add it and we're just gonna use 127.0.0.1 localhost client short name rad server so that's set up as rad server here client shared secret 
Um, and the client short name actually can be whatever you want. So enter a short name for the client if you didn't know. Uh, but you do have to remember the shared secret here. So we'll set something there. All the other defaults are perfectly fine. We don't have to worry about any of these. Now, please note, if you were setting this up for others, external authentication, other devices, this is you can set up more than one uh, client. So if you have an, a switch or a Wi-Fi authenticating this, not related to this video, but this is where you would set those up as well and put the IP addresses for different things that are going to be connecting. So now that that's added, we're going to go over here to System, User Manager, Authentication Server, and add the authentication server. Rad Server. Radius, defaults to MSChat 2, 27.0.0.1. Uh, attribute it to things connecting to LAN, uh, in case you're wondering. And these are the default ports, 1812, 1813. Like I said, when you use defaults, it just kind of falls in there. Uh, the shared secret that we did. And save. And that's pretty much it for getting it set up for authentication. Now we can go and uh, add a user. So we're going to go here to free radius, add a user, user one, put a password in here, and I'm just going to save it. So it's all, there's a lot of other options here, obviously, but for sake of testing here was user, and we gave that user a password. And from there, we can go to diagnostic, authentication, authenticate against our RAD server, user one, and test successfully authenticated. That's the only thing you have to do to get the server set up and then verify it's working. So this is, you know, load it, run through, make sure you test on the authentication server. And you can also do this like test against local database. Well, that user doesn't work. So once you know authentication is working, then you can go in and have the fun. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I've walked through how to do OpenVPN. It's really the same thing. So I'm not going to uh, go through in depth on this, but when you run the wizard, you just choose the radius and the rad server uh, or you can add a new radius server and it'll walk you through what I just did again and we're going to next and yes our way into a working VPN. So everything here is fine. Uh, port here, nothing special we have to change. Uh, 70.24. All these are just going to leave everything at default. Next. Go ahead and uh, add a firewall rule, add an open VPN rule. All right, so we now have a VPN set up and ready to work. We're going to export it and we're going to get uh, my computer connected to this VPN. I'll just download most clients because I'm running Linux and Linux works fine with this export. And if you didn't uh, know, just to make sure people are clear on this, package manager, available packages, install packages I mean I could probably update to the latest one here but it's uh, open VPN client export we'll update it while I'm sitting here real quick in case you ever wonder how to update a package and it goes really fast and that's done so we have the open VPN export tool this is what allows me just to download this config file matter of fact we'll go ahead and download this file again so VPN open VPN client export there's our VPN. Download most clients. All right, now we're going to go ahead and connect to the VPN on this machine. Now, first, a couple little details that I want to cover so we know the network layout. I do have a couple computers connected here. So uh, these two computers, one at 104 and one at 107. So uh, yes, you've seen dot 40. Uh, there's actually just for clarification, if we look at LAN2, uh, this IP address is in the 10 network, and we did bind it to, for authentication purposes, here. But it doesn't matter because what does matter is that this network is configured and set up. We will go to, to OpenVPN. we got to make sure that network's been pushed over here. 0 slash 24. And away we go, we know this network's pushed. So when we connect to this VPN using the user, should work perfectly fine and we'll connect. All right, so from the command line, and this is obviously if you're doing it in Windows, you'd go through the whole Windows installer with the open VPN, but from the command line, we'll sudo open VPN, and I called, I renamed it uh, freerad.ovpn.
user1, password, All right, and I have been assigned 192.168.70.2. And let's go ahead and ping one of those IP addresses. 10.104, I think, was available. VPN is up and running. And if you uh, look at my computer here, you can see this is the tunnel network that's on there. And here's the 192.168 network. You see I'm not on that network, so it's obviously routing through the VPN. You have to take my word for it if you believe I'm doing some other trickery. But anyways, that works. So now we know I can connect to the VPN. So we're going to go up here to the top window, and we'll exit out of the VPN. And uh, let's go a step further. So one of the things I talked about was how do you create the rules so that each computer can only talk to a certain thing or get assigned a very specific IP address using free radius. So we go over here. Go to free radius. We're going to go over to this user. And before I was uh, given the 192.168.70.2, it's just if the next user connects, they would have got 70.3, so on and so forth. That's the default way OpenVPN assigns addresses. 192.168.70. Let's start at 100. So uh, 101. So 100. Uh, 192.168.70.101, subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Now you do have to put both or you'll get an error. You can't leave it blank. You don't really have to put the gateway because uh, it's only, you, what the goal of this is only to be designed to access things on that local network. So you don't have to specify any of that part here. So what we are assigning now is that this user that we just called user one is going to get this IP address to this connection. So we're going to hit save. We're going to add another user at the same time. We'll call this one user2. User2 gets 192.168.1.70.102. Save. And now we can see that this user gets that. Now, before we even bother connecting, I'm going to go over here to the firewall and we'll go over to the rules. Because I already know it's going to assign those addresses, but those addresses mean nothing if the rules let them go wherever they want. So we're going to go ahead and delete, delete, and let's add a very specific rule. Start with any, and then we'll say single host is 192.168.70.101. And we'll let 101 go wherever they want. So destination can be wherever they want. So 101 has free reign. Go wherever. Then we're going to add another user. Actually, we'll just, uh, copy the rule. And 102. The only destination address I want 102 to have is 10.1.10.104. So any protocol, but you can restrict this down if you only wanted to have a single port, for example, or any specific thing. But we're going to go ahead and allow any protocol. But the only thing when they get connected they're allowed to talk to is this resource on the network. And this can be across any network. I have something on the 10 network. It could be on the 192.168.40 network. But uh, this is user2 gets to the 104 machine. Save. So we can follow this, that if you're assigned this IP address, you get here. We're going to apply the changes. So now let's try connecting as, uh, we'll try user 2 first. User 2. And I've been assigned 102. That means I can ping 104. But what if I wanted to ping the gateway? Can't do it, so I can't route out. Uh, what if I wanted to ping 107? That's another computer on there. Doesn't work either. All right, so let's go back up to the top. And we'll hit Control C, just to you know, cancel it. Log in again. And we'll go user 1. Took a second to connect because uh, 
it thought I was the same connection coming in because I come over the same IP address, so it took a second, but it connects. And now with user one, I'm able to ping 107 and 104 and the gateway because the user restrictions on this are, you know, go wherever. So this is a way you can create open VPN connections using uh, PF Sense and Free Radius, and then have each user go to a very specific place. So we go over here back to the rules to show you, and you can see that this is where you write each rule, and you can just copy and carry on so each user has each rule, and you can put in description which user has which. Now, a couple notes about this, and we're going to go ahead and kind of sort of break something, because uh, this is a problem that I didn't notice at first, but it makes complete sense when I explain why. So we're logged in. as user with IP address of 101 right here. And so we're gonna go ahead and edit user one with IP address 101 and we're gonna make it 105. So I saved it, it took the save, it's 105. So as soon as I log back in, it should just go back to 105. So we're gonna go ahead and go up here and disconnect user one. But I got 101 again. You're probably going, how did that happen? I did it right. So then you get confused and you do it again. You're like, user one. And I got the same IP address again. So what happens is, and we're going to go ahead and fix this by going here. If, even though I hit control C, it still thinks 101 is connected. And by default, it wants to reestablish a connection if there's a disruption to that connection. So if you change it and the user happened to be logged in when you changed it and still had a connection, which when you disconnect, there's a delay between the disconnect from the user before it times the connection out here. You just have to kill the connection. And when you kill the connection here or restart, you know, you can just actually just restart it and it kills all the connections. So if you make a few user changes, you can do that. This is what will force that connection to drop and what, uh, by killing it here or restarting the OpenVPN service and drop the connections. Now, when we reconnect, it'll take a second because I just restarted the service and it's going to pause for a second while it reestablishes, but now the user will get the right address. And hey, look, I got the 105 address, which by the way, because I got a different address, if I try to ping anything, because I have the wrong address, I can't get anywhere. A couple side notes about this. There are not to any of my knowledge, and I played around with this trying to break it to see if like, if one of these users were able to force or change their IP address once assigned. I wasn't able to get that to work. It seems like once it's assigned from the OpenVPN server side, you can't just rename your IP address in case you're wondering from a security standpoint. Now, I may be wrong, but I played around with this and tried force changing my IP address and it wouldn't connect on the other end if I tried to force any IP information. I couldn't really figure out any way to, uh, to do that. So I will mention, maybe I'm wrong. Please leave a comment uh, if you know a way of a user connecting. But this is one extra layer of security that you can add to OpenVPN. IBC OpenVPN is quite secure, well-documented, and the methodology that I am uh, did here, and we'll actually go to the top just to talk about this part a little bit, because of the file we downloaded, so we'll uh, just look at what's in here. The user would have to have, here's the certificates that are required. So we have the certificate, the TLS key, then have the username and password for this attack for them to get into your OpenVPN server. So you have those extra uh, pieces. And this is the remote IP I, that I know of. There's no way to push a local IP from here and push it into the server like I was saying. But uh, hopefully this was helpful and I may do some future videos on how to use uh, free radius for a few other things, including captive portals. It's another way you can do it. So if you are setting up a captive portal screen, you can use free radius for that. And uh, it does work because I've tested it. Like I said, I'm going to do a separate video on captive portals. But with the, I want to do the free radius video first because one thing to note when you're doing a captive portal or free radius this works for the accounting where you can set uh, expiration dates, length of time, uh, download, upload, time periods, bandwidth, um, and speed settings. That's another feature you can do. So if you're using this to authenticate with it, that'll work. So 
I just want to get this out there. It's a pretty cool tool uh, to be able to have it all integrated right into the firewall. And for a user that we just helped the other day or a client we helped the other day, um, they needed to set up because they actually have it set up so they only get to a specific machine and a specific port on a machine for each uh, customer they define inside of PFSense via here. So they have a lot of customers logging in. When the customer logs in, they only have access to only and specifically the thing that they were granted access to right down to the port level uh, they created. So it's uh, definitely a nice secure way to have the encrypted security layer and then the rule sets that keep people from wandering around the network once they get in. And hopefully this clears up if you have any questions about that. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.